Uh, any questions that people might have? Yeah. Okay, so um, with you traveling around the world to a lot of the um, Muslim countries, do you think that here in, 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 in the United States that implementing Sharia law would be possible? So did everyone hear the question? Because it wasn't microphone. He asked about Sharia law in the United States. I travel to the, uh, and a lot, of, a lot of people fear that what Muslims want to do in the United States is implement Sharia law. But let me just say what Sharia is. Um, so I, I put it, for, for Jews, you're supposed to live by the law and the prophets. Like this is the way you're, like how are you supposed to live as a Jew? How are you supposed to live? You live according to the law. And um, it just tells you how to live. And, and, and you can read the Midrash, and uh, you can read all sorts of other commentaries, and you can find out it gets really complicated. Well, that's what Sharia is. It's really complicated how to live. A lot of, if someone goes to school and learns about Sharia, they may focus like on divorce. Like, what do you do in case of a divorce? That might be the, because there's so much that's been written you know, in over 1,200, 1,300 years. Uh, on divorce, so you may just learn that. What are you supposed to do? Uh, so it tells um, Muslims how to live. And what we tend to think is uh, what it is, is if someone robs or steals, they, should, they get their hands cut off. If someone drops the Quran on the ground, they're killed. Uh, if someone deconverts, if someone goes from uh, a Muslim to, say, a Christian or an atheist, then they're killed. Well, and that's what it is in Saudi Arabia. By the way, it's horrible in Saudi Arabia. I don't know why, of all the Muslim-majority countries in the world, the one that we've aligned ourselves with is the most vicious. And um, the one where, sh where sh the worst form, and this isn't Sharia, this is the worst form of radical Sharia that there is, is in <laughs> Saudi Arabia. Most Muslims, it's just, how am I supposed to live my life as a Muslim? And um, they, they don't want it to be the Constitution. However, if a Muslim wants to get a divorce, if a Jew wants to get a divorce, they can go to a Jewish um, like lawyer and they can, uh, or sort of court, they can decide and they can split, they can split up the inheritance, they can split up the home, they can make decisions about the children. It can all happen at a, in a Jewish court and then that's not done in the United States, you're not divorced yet, but you can take that and you can take it to uh, judges who will say, amen, you know, I agree, Le this is legal now. You, you did all the hard work. It all happened in this Jewish court. You can do the same thing in a, with a Sharia judge. Now, if you live in Dearborn, Michigan, which is the most populous Muslim city in the United States, uh, you could find uh, a Sharia expert, and you could say, we want to get a divorce. They do the same thing. They can take it to a judge, uh, a secular United States judge, and the judge will just say, you know, legal, done. The courts did that. So there are Sharia courts all over the U.S. There are some Jewish courts in the U.S. There probably are Christian places. I just don't know. I happen to know them about these other two. They're no big deal that they do this. Saves a lot of time and money, uh, and it fits with what people believe. It's a good thing. Taking Sharia and making it, the, replacing it with the Constitution, Muslims in the United States do not want that. Uh, and even if they did, I think, who cares? They're only 3% of the U.S. population. Do you know what it takes to get a new Constitution? Every state would have to, I think two-thirds of the U.S. would have to vote on it. I'm not quite sure how you add something to the Constitution, but two-thirds of the U.S. would have to vote to get it. And then all the states would have to ratify it. It isn't going to happen. So the fear is totally irrational. If you listen to right-wing news, though, you'd think it's they're trying to get Sharia law in Georgia. Um, and, but it, it, isn't, it isn't happening, and it isn't going to happen. And Muslims in the U.S. don't want it. They don't want it to replace the Constitution. They want to live in a place where religious freedoms are protected, like you do. Any other questions? It's a good one, though. He's from Brooklyn. <laughs> he came all the way from Brooklyn. Okay. You got one? Yeah. By the way, let me just tell you this. Uh, I'll save it for tonight, too. There are no bad questions. 
there are ones people are going to groan and wish you hadn't asked, but uh, there are questions other people have probably. I'll just give you an example. I, I, I just finished directing a million dollar grant that had, I, I work mostly with academics. I try to get young thought leaders, Muslims, Christians, and Jews together because I want them to go back into their communities and work with students and work with their local communities and work with their, their mosques, their synagogues, and their churches on compassion and peace. You had your say and you're out of here, brother? Yes, sir. All right. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> Good luck. Bon voyage. Um, so our first week together, uh, we all agreed to meet together and live together for a week, and uh, everyone shares rooms. So you have a Muslim and a Christian in a room, or a Jew and a Muslim in a room. And, and we, I had two Iranians. All the Jews are from Israel. My Iranians had never met. One had never met a Jew. One had never met anyone from Israel. And they're taught to hate Israelis in Iran. And they're sharing a room all of a sudden. Really interesting week, and then partway through, one of the uh, older uh, Jewish participants walked up to a Muslim, looks him in the eye, and the interesting thing is he felt like, we're so close now, I can, you can tell me the truth. And he looks him in the eye and he said, you want to kill me, don't you? And the Muslim was so gracious and it was, I don't know, it's, here's a chance to change somebody's life. People think that. If you don't say what you think, we'll never get over our biases and prejudices. So there are no bad questions when I, when I go out. And, and Aziz and Nancy agree. We try to get people to ask whatever they really think. And, um, and then you can hear what Aziz says about it. You can hear what Nancy says about it. You can hear what I have to say about it. So there are no bad questions. Nobody should be embarrassed to say, you want to kill me, don't you? You're Messiah. You want to wow. kill me, don't you? See, good. She's already on it. All right. I don't think you want to kill me. I'm just saying, people people can should feel free to ask if we're if we're ever going to get. It. All right. So I'm going to take his question. Yeah. Um. So before you mentioned, uh, you said about Saudi Arabia, right? That um. That. That in that country, punishments are very physical. You said that they cut your hand off, and it's violence, right? I think you said that. Yeah, if you steal something, you can have your hand cut off. And I think that it, isn't the worst thing. Just look up. Maybe a month ago, six weeks ago, if you are arrested for espionage, which can mean that you went to a protest, you're a Shia, and you went to a protest because you're dispossessed, and you're 14, and are going to Western Michigan which is just in my hometown. There was a 14-year-old was arrested for going to a protest, and he had his head cut off about six weeks ago. Um, it's, it's very serious. It's not a secret. You can read it in the news. Yeah. Because you know, you know what it is, is like in the United States, you know, we, everybody complain, people, the citizens complain, saying, oh, you know, you go to jail, you, you commit a crime, you get a, either you get a ticket or you, get a, you go to jail. And in some states, for murder, you get capital punishment. And, you know, it's just people think it's the worst thing because here we don't give physical punishments anymore. It's just capital punishment depending on the crime. But in other countries, it's a lot worse. You know, like in Saudi Arabia, uh, you know, many other Asian countries, they, they give physical harm. You know, yeah. here, here it's nothing compared to, you know, over there, you yeah. know. Yeah. No, good point. We, so just to let us know we're not all saints here, though, I think we punish people too long <laughs> in the U.S., uh, Europeans are much better, uh, and um, and our punishments are not colorblind. If you're black in America, uh, if you're a white swimmer from Stanford and you rape somebody, you're going to get three months in jail. If you're a black man who rapes some, maybe rapes somebody, you don't even have to have done it. Maybe you're, you're going to get 14 years. So we don't we don't have colorblind justice here. Um, so we, we have think we have we have our own problems. Or if he even kills other people, he is not I mean executed. Innocent he will be put in jail for 
let's say 10 years, 15 years, something like that, and we have the, in the same in US. Uh, that's not uh, unknown in Afghanistan. We have the same process in, uh, uh, let's say, Pakistan, uh, Indonesia, Malaysia, Muslims, um, uh, some other countries. The uh, other thing is related to. Did everyone hear that? So just to, I'll just quickly make your point because they. So uh, I all I said was there's this character. There's really this caricature of Sharia, and the, the caricature is if you steal, you get your hands cut off. If you kill somebody, you get your head cut off. That's the caricature, and that's what people think Muslims want. Oh, and then everyone has to be a Muslim. That's what people think. And um, uh, most Muslims don't. That's not what they think Sharia is. They don't want to live like that, and most Muslim-majority countries are not like that. They're not even close. Yeah. And he's uh, from Afghanistan, so yeah. he was saying it's not Another like that. Another thing there. is uh, uh, I, I'm not very expert in... Uh, Arabic because Arabic is not my language, uh, but, but I know uh, when when I read Holy Quran, uh, I mean 80 percent, 70, 75, 80 percent. Uh, Quran was descended to Prophet Muhammad uh, around 1,400 years ago, around let's say, but now it's 2019, so uh, 21st century. It means we need. Uh, th this is always my, my perspective. We need uh, a more accurate and more uh, a new, uh, let's say, uh, interpretation of the Quran based on the regulations and policies of the nowadays world. I mean, whatever it's written there, now it should be reinterpreted by, by experts, I mean by, by Islamic scholars, so that it, it is compatible with the lives, the, the way people are living in yeah. this world. And nowadays it's taking place in, in most of countries. And uh, most of the, let's say, uh, we have four countries, three countries in the world that they have Islamic uh, word term in their passport. Islamic Republic of Afghanistan, Islamic Republic of Pakistan, and Islamic Republic of uh, uh, Iran. I, I don't think any other country have the term Islamic. I don't think, uh, even Saudi Arabia, that, that's written Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, something like that. So in these countries, they are more secular, the governments, compared to Saudi Arabia, although they have the term Islam. In, the, in Iran, if, if someone is still something, if even some, maybe because of the, the, that's extreme Shia, extreme Shia, and the Saudi Arabia is extreme Sunni, they are fighting against the, the, because of the power in the Middle East. And uh, that's why they, they do something. But even in Iran, they do not still, uh, if someone right. is still, they do not cut dance, and that's something to be addressed. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I think we, <coughs> where's Basel? He's our <coughs> expert here. I think we probably should quit here. I think there are things people need to go to. Anyway, thanks all of you for listening. I hope, I hope you get a little taste and want to come back tonight. All right. <laughs>